Now, the University of Cape Town's Black Academic Caucus has raised concerns that outgoing Vice Chancellor Professor Mamukheti Pakeng was publicly forced to take early retirement. She was recently placed on leave with immediate effect. Her exit comes as a four member panel led by retired Supreme Court of Appeal Judge President Lexham Parties investigating, among other things, whether UCT Council Chairperson Baba Rangonyama and Vice Chancellor Professor Mamukheti Pakeng misled the Senate in relation to the departure of uh, former Deputy Vice Chancellor Professor uh, Lise Langa uh, last year. Uh, for more on this, uh, we are now joined uh, by Dr. Klumani Ndlovu, the chair of the UCT Black Academic Caucus. Kajeni, good evening, and thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight uh, on In Focus. W what, what is actually happening here? What are the machinations that are happening behind the scenes? What we are seeing are reports uh, that uh, the uh, Professor uh, Mamukhiti Paking, the Vice Chancellor, has been um, offered a, a settlement as part of the deal. Uh, amounting to millions, uh, those millions also not yet confirmed. But that's the story, and that she has now left the university. Uh, good evening, Tabo, uh, and good evening to the viewers. Uh, also, we as the PAC uh, just know as little as you know uh, when it comes to the issue of the VC. I think we probably have heard more from the media than we've heard from our council in relation to this particular matter, which, of course, I mean, raises serious concerns. Um, so you asked um, earlier, you know, what is happening in relation to this matter. Um, I, I think there's a lot of things that are happening, uh, and it's a very complex issue. Um, but I think uh, in our view as the, the PAC, at the core of this thing is really is a fight for the soul of the of UCT. This really is the core. And uh, what is the, that core is that there are forces within UCT which are refusing to transform at a pace that we require as a university. Um, I think uh, if you were, for instance, to look at the structure, which is a key structure like Senate, uh, currently as things stand, uh, in terms of the demographics profile of Senate, uh, UCT right now, we are sitting at about 66% white, right? Um, and then it kind of tells you, uh, you know, kind of challenges the VC was facing, right? For someone who's very strong and very pro-transformation um, to work in a structure that basically is, uh, you know, dominantly white is, is, is a big challenge, right? Um, and I want to also just put it on record that we as, as the PAC have been very clear on this uh, issue of uh, changing the demographics of, uh, of Senate. We actually put a motion uh, uh, through last year to Senate. So the motion just to, to debate, a mere debate around how do we diversify the profile of Senate. Mm. And it was shot down. The senators of UCT refused to debate to debate the issue of changing the demographics. So it sure. tells you the kind of problems we have. Um, and so when a uh, Senate, um, you know, uh, last year pushed for uh, the, 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 um, this investigation into the VC, I think most of us knew where it was going. It, the writing was on the wall. Um, so really, this is where we're coming from. It's the Senate is basically exerting more power than what it has. It's the institutional forum that is basically has gone quiet. And it's the council, in my view, that, I mean, uh, and also in our view as the PAC, that basically has become almost factional and become very divided, as we've seen in the media, how it's yeah. been playing out. And the end result of that is that, I mean, we've lost uh, our VC. Uh, so that's really what is happening at UCC, and that's our perspective of the PAC. So it seems as the PAC, I mean, you, you were expecting certain things to have been done, and those things were not done. For example, were, were you expecting that the, 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 the Senate will, will carry through uh, with this particular investigation? And what do you think it would have revealed? Because there's a debate, for example, uh, uh, on, 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 on some of the platforms that says, well, if they really do believe that they had a case, why would they want to settle? Why not carry on with the investigation uh, so that it proves them right, whatever it is that they were alleging? Well, you know, I mean, we, and I think this is a point we've made many times, uh, that we were really hope, hopeful that, you know, Senate was going to live up to its word, not Senate, uh, sorry, our council was going to live up to its word and do a full-scale investigation into the um, happenings over the last seven months at UCT. Now, what we hear, although, of course, not yet confirmed, uh, you know, unequivocally by uh, council, is we hear that, I mean, these terms of the investigation are going to be narrowed down. And I think this is going to be a huge travesty for UCT and the UCT community because they are not going to understand fully 
you know, what has transpired over the last um, seven months, which means that then, you know, we're going to have uh, the interim um, VC and ultimately going to appoint a more permanent uh, VC. It's possible that these issues may play out again in the future, right, because we've not done an in-depth analysis and in-depth investigation into the drivers of the issues we see playing out, right? What we were hoping for as, as, as a BAC is that the scope of the investigation was going to look at, one, the conduct of Senate, Right. We are of the view that when the letter was introduced to Senate, it basically flouted some rules of Senate, of Senate. So looking at that particular issue, look at the issue of the, you know, the consistent instability of management, which basically happened just at the beginning when the VC was taking up a, 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 a term of office. I mean, those who were aware, uh, of course, would know that there was the pink report that was authored right, uh, at, right at the beginning of her tenure. There was an issue of uh, questioning the qualifications right at the beginning of a tenure as a VC, right? Um, and, you know, some of us, I mean, I'm based in the Faculty of Health Sciences, um, and what we came to learn after the Mayosi report was that there was corridor talk that was happening in the corridors of our faculty, you know, where people would talk behind uh, our dean then, right? And all of those things were some of the factors that were precipitating what we know was, a, I mean, a very sad end at the end, right? So this was the environment that this was going into, right? Uh, and then there was instability of uh, departures of members of the executive. And then, of course, then there's the issue of the leaks, right? And no one is speaking about the leaks from council. That like we get more accurate information from Derry Maverick than we get from the council of the university. Even today, with this issue of the VC, we know nothing. Um, this is very detailed and, 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 and addressed to the university community. And it's a problem, right? Now, with the, the terms of reference, I mean, seemingly to be narrowed, we as UCT are poorer through that action. But also there's talks of NDAs, right? And at the very core of the, the complaint from Senate was the signing of NDAs and the okay. culture of um, unaccountability and lack of transparency from the university leadership. And again, now we are back to the same point where we were at the beginning, where seemingly the VC has signed or will sign, we don't know, the NDA. Yeah. So there's so many questions, so few answers. And so, basically, ask the university committee, we know nothing at this stage. Uh, NDAs, of course, by now, NDAs, you mean non-disclosure agreements, which means, for example, things like what the settlement was will, will never come out. Correct. We will never know. And uh, so we can speak. It does the fact that there are these agreements and uh, there is some kind of settlement set back the, the agenda of transformation? Well, I think it, 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 it also speaks to the values of the institution, right? Particularly as it relates to accountability, as it relates to transparency. Uh, I think, uh, I think uh, you know, council owes the investor community that level of accountability, that level of transparency. And, and because we're losing on that, you know, we just basically are all working in the dark. And I think um, the, the transition agenda at, at, at Synergy, Definitely will be faltered by the the the, the, the council um, decision to basically you know force the VC into early retirement, right? Because I think we can fault the VC on many things, but one thing that we can never falter on was a commitment to transform the university, and as such, that we saw a very strong pushback from a, a very small but, but very strong uh, you know cabal of what colleagues. Uh, I mean, I'm going to be frank and just call it what it is. Um, this is it's a small cabal, but it's very, very strong. It's very vocal. We know some of us who sit at Senate, what we deal with, I mean, every day in those meetings. Um, so it, it's rough. And we're hoping that, I mean, at least at this time, during an exit, we'll get to understand the full complexity of issues. And then we can put better systems not only to transform, you know, the staff and, and, and the student demographics, but fundamentally to transform the institutional culture of, of UCT. And again, go back, going back to the reports of the university, we have the RTC report. What does it say? It says that at UCT there's a culture of institutional racism. It's very clear on the point, the RTC report. And the problem is, and this is what we call the VCO, they have to do something to implement the recommendations of the RTC report. Until today, there is no clear implementation of those recommendations uh, from the university. And we've been trying to basically force them to act on those particular recommendations because they speak to the experiences of black students speak to the experiences of black staff members across all levels at the university. And, I mean, that progress has not been forthcoming, unfortunately. Are you surprised that uh, the, the Minister of Higher Education is, is also pretty much 
uh, in the dark on this one because according to a, a response from spokesperson Ishmael Nisi, uh, it says here that the minister himself is still waiting on the, for, for, for a report on the, on the matter uh, of the VC. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure probably the minister has, has picked up, uh, you know, from the media, uh, but I'm sure also through the right channels, uh, the right people will be able to communicate to the minister, uh, you know, just to, uh, you know, pay attention to what's happening at DCT, right? Because, uh, I mean, we are definitely are concerned that, you know, this is going to compromise the acad academic program. And I think the minister also should be com concerned about, you know, whether this will not affect, you know, uh, the academic program at DCT. So definitely, we would, as the PAC, definitely we would want to call on the minister to look into our plight and to try and intervene if the powers allow him to do so. Um, you know, and, and more so on, on this issue of uh, this investigation, right, which seems to be basically watered down, and it's being led, in my view, by uh, a, a council that is divided. Uh, it's quite clear. I mean, we, we saw last year with um, the, 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 the letter that was sent out by members of, some members of the council. Right. We've seen uh, some members of council resigning. So it's clearly is divided. So can we trust the council with such a big task of unraveling these issues? I'm doubtful. Right. And I'm hoping that the minister can look at these things and say, is there a way that I can intervene so that we can get to the bottom of this thing and we figure out exactly what is uh, happening and then we can build better systems to support leaders in future DCT. Um, and we're hoping, hoping that, I mean, he is able to come to the, to the, to the fore and intervene on the, on the score. Dr. Sumani Jovo, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for coming on, Chair you, of the UCT Black Academic Caucus there, uh, raising their concerns about the departure of the VC, Professor Mamukheti Parking.